Good afternoon, everyone. And uh, here is a, a session that I'm personally really looking forward to, which is, is gaming going to be bigger than Bollywood? Now, that is, that is not just the million-dollar question. It's the multi-billion-dollar question, right? Uh, it's, it's like it's, a, it's this whole thing about it's going to be so big, so big, that we don't know how big it's going to be. So, Mithin, over to you. And uh, very excited to, to, be, uh, to have all of you. Uh, I think uh, this is India's uh, biggest gamers. Um, I mean, gaming company founders. We just had Harsh uh, uh, on a fireside chat. And so thank you again for uh, giving your time towards the India Internet Day. Mithin, over to you. Thank you so much, Latika. Thanks for, uh, thanks for having, uh, having all of us here. Um, I think we're still waiting for Sai, who might be having some connectivity issues. But uh, before, uh, in, in the meantime, we can do some introductions as we go around the table. Um, so, um, you know, I mean, why is this the, the, the topic uh, and, and why the title and really sort of want to, I want to start there and then we can, we can, uh, we can all do introductions. So, you know, uh, for the longest time, um, India's internet story has all been about free, 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 large scale, um, and, and hopefully we'll make some money, right? That's the, that's the point that uh, I think we've always heard. And, and I can see Tarun smiling. This is one of those dilemmas uh, the whole market's been in. Who will pay? How will we make money? It sort of seems like gaming is where it might it might happen. So, um, you know, the question I really want all of us to talk about and and, and think about is: um, Are we? Um, is 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 the gaming opportunity as big or bigger than um, Bollywood? Right, and that's sort of the question we're going to ask ourselves. So, it'd be great if we can just do a round of introductions, uh, go around the table. Just a couple of. Uh, you know, pieces of uh, background and what your company does, and 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 then we'll sort of uh, dig right in. So, Pawan, I'll start with you. Pawan, we can't hear you for some. Is your mic? Sorry, yeah, I was on mute. Hi, everyone. Uh, very delighted to uh, be here, uh, especially this esteemed panel. I think I I know most of you guys, you know, and have special relationships with each one of you uh, outside this dice as well. Uh, I'm the co-founder and CEO of Vinzo. Uh, at Vinzo, uh, basically Vinzo is a vernacular entertainment gaming platform, uh, which is pretty much backed by microtransactions. So what we do is we have an Android platform right now where we tie up with third-party game developers, bring their games on board. So we have about 50, 55 odd games, uh, ranging from so small developers as well as large, you know, global IPs as well. Uh, and most of these games are played by tier two, tier five audience in vernacular mode, uh, you know, pretty much 18 to 35, the next generation of smartphone users, uh, the, 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 so to say, Bharat that we, that we all are targeting or the opportunity that we all are chasing for. And uh, yeah, most of the games are played in a multiplayer uh, 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 social format. Uh, there are multiple formats. It can be a table versus mode. But essentially, the idea is for people to come play with other players uh, or strangers or their offline friends. And while we do all of that, uh, people usually pay an entry fee for each of these games. And the way our model works is we collect a, we collect a, 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 a pot and we collect a rake from a pot. And that pot is basically, you know, uh, being created by taking entry fees. So it's, uh, in a way, a real, a real money microtransaction led platform. And it's been two years since we are, since we are in operations. And I think we are growing reasonably fast. We have about uh, 25 million users. Uh, clocking about 5 million MAUs, uh, doing close to a billion microtransactions a month. So I think, uh, yeah, I think it's a phenomenal response to uh, to what we are building by our audience. Thank you so much, Pavan. So we'll go to Saurabh next. Saurabh, uh, what do you do? What's your company? Right. So hi, Mithin. Hi, everyone. Uh, I am the CEO at Octro. Uh, we've been a gaming company in India probably for the longest period of time, uh, you know, much longer than, uh, you know, except for Manish, of, of, you know, of course. Uh, so, so we, you know, Octro is a diversified gaming company. We have uh, titles in social, in very, you know, in some very different genres. Uh, you know, some of the genres that where we are sort of dominant are social casino and, uh, you know, skill games. Uh, you know, some of our larger games are Teen Patti, Indian Rami, Tambola, uh, we have titles like Caram, C, you know, you know, a bunch of other titles as well. Uh, in the skill gaming vertical, we operate a title called Play Rummy and uh, also Gold Eleven, which is you know our, our upcoming DFS platform. Uh, 
uh, yeah so you know i mean uh, i'm very excited to be on this plat- you know on this platform you know definitely uh, you know it's a, it's a good question to ask right uh, you know whether gaming is going to be bigger than bollywood or not absolutely yeah so so on that on that point we'll go to tarun tarun's the investor on the panel tarun uh, your background um, and uh, what what gets you excited about gaming hey thank you uh, mithen and great to be on this panel with everybody thanks for having me a uh, quick introduction uh, i'm a partner at matrix uh, partners india which is an early stage vc firm uh, we typically invest uh, seed to series b and then obviously continue to uh, support companies that we invest in uh, one of the sectors that i spend time on is gaming and honestly what's happened in the last i think couple of years uh, with gaming has been fascinating to see uh, we had traditionally before this only made one gaming investment in a card based uh, rummy uh, company called as23 uh, which turned out really well for us and uh, have made one more investment recently um, i just think it, the story is just starting and so really excited to hear about uh, and i've obviously had the opportunity to meet all of you offline so looking forward to sharing some insights from me and also hearing from you guys great uh, manish can you hear us i can hear you mithen finally great please uh, tell us about your yourself your company and 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 then we'll go to sai hi everyone this is lovely as i think bhavan said good to be with friends uh, so all of you dear dear friends many many years so good uh, to all the listeners thank you for listening to the gaming boys uh, we keep chatting uh, so we'll keep chatting here also uh, I'm CEO of Nazara, uh, which is one of the oldest, largest gaming company. Uh, we run multiple things, and some people like us for that. Some people say that you are too spread. So that's that's what we are. So we run esports. We are the largest esports company in this country. We run sports simulation games, mobile free-to-play games. We run kids subscription services, and we dabble with a little bit of fantasy and thing we are scared of that we are not as bold as some of my other colleagues on this panel uh, so thodi patti hai hamari but that's what we do thank you thank you so much for that uh, and you know just just for the you know some of the people in the audience who probably don't have this historical context nazara has has been one of the um, you know uh, first companies in this space which has also had multiple titles multiple iterations of and, and lots of different successful businesses so Well, we're obviously very lucky to have you here with all the context that you have. Uh, so thanks for joining us. And Sai, um, over to you. Uh, tell us about MPL and yourself. Right. So hey, firstly, thank you so much uh, for uh, having me uh, having me here to be with uh, all you folks. So I'm Sai. I'm the uh, I'm one of the co-founders and uh, CEO of uh, MPL. Uh, I think uh, I think we are the youngest uh, gaming company on the on the panel here. Uh, we are a competitive game. Uh, and also an esports platform. Our focus is to enable game developers to publish games on our platform, uh, which in turn we provide to our customers to compete in, and we make money for both game developers as well as users who are very very good at uh, playing some of these games. Thank you for that. Thank you for that, Sai. So, Tarun, let me start with you. Um, how big is this opportunity really? Is this a um, billion dollar revenue opportunity 5 billion 10 billion how big is maybe 50 billion how big is this opportunity really and as when you look at it from an investor investor lens uh what gets you excited and why now that's that's the most important question why now yeah so mithen i'm going to actually uh, uh, i'm going to give a little bit of background uh, and uh, about the opportunity itself and i'll also try and answer the question because the title is is gaming going to be bigger than bollywood itself right so I'll, I'll try and make some comparison between gaming and Bollywood today, and I think the macro context, which obviously everybody here on this panel is well aware of, but just for the audience, I think you know there are two or three big things that happened in the last couple of years, right? One is obviously all of us are very familiar with what Jio did. Uh, we you know went from 100 million internet users to 600, 600, 600, 700 internet million uh, billion internet users over the last couple of years. Uh, more importantly, there was an explosion of data. right the average internet user used to use like less than half a gigabyte per month today we have that same user uh doing 15 20 gigabytes per month and that that number is actually growing very very fast right uh, projected to go to 50 plus gigabytes per month in the next year or two um and if you look at the hours that all of us are spending on the mobile continuously just keeps going up every year and this is not this is like pre covid obviously covid accelerated that number by like you know 
couple of hundred percentage points on gaming itself in particular. But overall, all of us are spending much more time on our mobile phones than we ever did. I personally have just turned off my you know, screen notification from Apple about how many hours I spent on the mobile because it's actually depressing to see. It just keeps going up every week. Um, and, and you know, if I take a look at the overall market, I mean, gaming is the fourth or fifth largest category in terms of where India spends its time, right? So I think it's the, if I remember reading right, about 8% of the average Indian uh, mobile connected user's time is spent on gaming. Uh, India is the largest download market. We have about, I think, 6 billion games downloaded in the last 12 months. Um, uh, but less than 0.2% of the App Store revenue is from India today. And I think therein lies the opportunity, right? I think it, there's a lot of usage. There's a lot of eyeballs on gaming. There's a lot of interest. But there is traditionally, other than card games, I think revenue opportunities were eluding most companies in gaming. And I think now with sort of RMG taking over and you know a bunch of other stuff happening, I think that is changing. By the way, just a tidbit for this panel. I, I found it really interesting. And I couldn't sleep last night after my son told me. So we just, you know, employed a new staff at home a couple of weeks ago. And last night, you know, he came and told me, hey, can you give me your Wi-Fi because my data is sort of expired. And I just gave him the Wi-Fi password. I said, okay, fine, whatever. Like two hours later, my son comes in and tells me, do you know he's got 65,000 followers on his PUBG streaming account? Wow. And I was like, are you kidding me? And I literally sat on his phone. For are you giving years. him a account sheet? Are you giving <laughs> so, so I was, I was amazed. Okay, and I was like, he's like, yeah, sixty-five thousand people follow him on his channel or whatever it is. And I was like, okay, this is like, and this is what it just blows your mind, right? Like when you can I sign him? Yeah. <laughs> so it's so, mainstream, mainstream. So, yeah. so it's 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 blowing my mind, right? And so I think what is happening is today, I think give or take revenue opportunity again, depending on who you ask, is seven eight hundred million dollars. Large part of it has been dominated by fantasy. Obviously, we know more than 40% of that seven eight hundred million million revenue opportunity today is fantasy. Uh, about $200 odd million dollars is, is just card-based games. And then the rest is, you know, 100 million casual games is growing, growing really, really fast, right? Casual RMG. My own estimate is that, again, having looked at various reports, is that this number will double very, very quickly over the next two to three years. I think at the pace at which the gaming industry is growing in India, uh, we should be doing at least two and a half to three billion dollars in overall sort of revenue from India gaming companies. Um, and again, there are different categories that will grow at a different pace, but broadly, that's where it, it is at. And I was looking at Bollywood, and just to quickly sort of wrap up my answer, if I look at Bollywood today, I just you know did some quick search because I had never looked at what Bollywood actually called, what is the total Bollywood revenue opportunity. It's amazing. Bollywood today is about a 4,000 crore annual revenue opportunity. Okay, and if I take overall India gaming, it's about 800 million. So believe it or not, gaming as it stands today in India is actually almost as big as Bollywood when it comes to just revenue pool, right? And if I look at now in terms of screens, we have about, I think, 250 to 300 million gamers in this country uh, uh, spending about 40, 50 minutes a day. And if I, again, project out over the next two to three years, I think why the space is so exciting is there's a potentially billion connected screens uh, spending upwards of one hour a day. And I don't think there's, I mean, that will overshadow Bollywood by like a, by like a margin, right? Uh, there's, there's not too many people who watch uh, Bollywood movies. You know, it's probably 100 million, 200 million, not more than that, right? And so I think, I mean, I think the, the, to me, that is why, why this space is so exciting. And I would love to obviously get your thoughts on this as well. So thank you for that, Tarun. I think that that comparison is really important, and I think, yeah, I mean, I, I think um, it's it, to, to me. I think I think gaming is definitely going to be, you know, uh, many fold the size of, uh, uh, you know, uh, a Bollywood. I think, and, and uh, far more engaging as well. So, uh, any of the other founders want to add any context to this in terms of how you think about the size of the opportunity and, and what are you going after, and how do you think about ARPU? So let's so, take a shot at it, then. I think uh, gaming ki story is like jab tum kisi reach ko bahut shiddat se chaho na to puri kainat lag jati hai tumhe usko milwane ke liye I think that is Bollywood you are bringing Bollywood aap Bollywood ki taraf ho ya gaming ki taraf yaar sawal ye hai ki Bollywood aapko hamesha inspiration dega aur gaming aapko paisa dega so I think that is what is really going to happen uh, you will build a very very large business uh, out of this this whole gaming space and i think what tarun said i'll just add on to one more data point is that 
this has been a very strong belief that in-app purchases in freemium in India will take ages to happen. I think last 18 months, that also has been demonstrated that isn't so true. Uh, there are games which have made over 500, 600 crores in a year from in-app purchase itself in India. And uh, consumers' propensity to pay, willingness to pay is really increased. And I'm not talking about COVID numbers. This is a pre-COVID number. So uh, I don't really want to get into uh, rhetorical questions of where will it subside and is it a COVID fad or all that stuff. I'm just kind of sticking to a pre-COVID numbers. And I think gaming is a new community. Uh, it's a new community platform. And I think that is where, uh, whether it's a number four in time spent or number five, I think very soon it will be really being talked to uh, as a genre, as a category where people are going to really spend time because you're all social interactions are happening in a in a context which is highly interactive and that interactivity is not constant it is changing by the minute because of the unpredictability nature of the gameplay and that really makes it an amazing context to continuously keep having conversations which are always fresh and that makes it super exciting uh, because a movie is a predictable thing while the unpredictable nature of sports when it meets to an inter entertainment story, makes it a super exciting combination. And which is where I think, uh, again, I will end it, which you guys will say, picture abhi baki hai. It was a trailer. Hai. No, uh, I, hey, uh, so I have, a, I have a couple points. I think, uh, I think what uh, Tarun said, right, he spoke about geo and how access, accessibility is, obviously accessibility has changed. I think the real game changer as to why gaming has really taken off is actually all thanks to you. I think uh, uh, you can you can have all the engagement in the world, you can have all the great games in the world, but if you don't have a way for people to pay you money, then you're not going to monetize, right? So I think one of the biggest changes is is in the fact that people can now pay you like three rupees, four rupees, five rupees, or whatever, even fifteen rupees or hundred rupees, very very conveniently. I think uh, that is a really really big game changer and. I think because of that is why a lot of companies, in fact, all the companies which uh, which have seen growth, including fantasy, including companies like us, Vinzo, etc., all of them is, is is because of payments being uh, universally accessible by uh, uh, you know uh, a lot of the customers. I think the second uh, and I think the second most thing is I think obviously it's going to become bigger than Hollywood. Uh, but I think the one thing one thing that is really really big is uh, not only from gaming revenues, but I think even from esports revenues that is content generated out of gaming. I think by itself will be much, much bigger than uh, 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 other content because the cost of creating that content for uh, for for, uh, for research is actually much, much lesser, uh, especially as you go more digital, right? As imagine, imagine today you can a tournament for a million people in a couple of minutes. But if you want to do that in the physical space, it's not for them. Uh, and if a million people are playing a tournament, that means the streams are being generated, right? And that million streams can create any more ad impressions. So, so the, the options of this industry are just uh, incredible. And I think with uh, Manish, that you know, I think uh, they're still on page five or six or something. So I think the rest of the nine pages, as you can see, I'm, I'm sure they'll make uh, this industry is going to make a lot of money. And and, and I think a lot of good companies are going to come out of it. Sai, so uh, so some, some of your stuff that you said kind of cut out in and out. Maybe you want to check your internet connection. But I'll just summarize. Basically, what you're saying is that actually the cost of creating a lot of the entertainment content here is much 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 cheaper as opposed to traditional uh, yep. entertainment formats and and therefore and it's also far more scalable because it can reach uh, a lot more people as opposed to sort of you know how, how traditional media has been thought about so yeah anything any so, other thoughts? yeah I, I would like, yeah, yeah i would like to add a couple of points uh, so first things first i think uh, the difference between gaming versus any other content platform is that uh, you know be it ott video or social media is that it's a lean on lean on kind of a mode right uh, your ad revenue is very much better when it comes to showing an ad to somebody who's on, right, or your uh, platform. Uh, the second bit is uh, uh, if you see the entire value chain, I mean, of course, you know, like, again, I think there is no doubt, I think, hands down, the entire panel agrees that uh, Bollywood uh, or probably gaming is going to really dwarf down Bollywood very soon. The rate of growth itself, right? Like, I was also going through before this session at what rate Bollywood is actually, is actually growing, right? It's $3 billion currently, and it's growing at 10% year on year. I think here we are talking about 100% year-on-year growth when it comes to gaming. And the entire value chain, so to say, is ready to be explored. 
right right from game development to game development engines to you know in app purchases streaming is has to come like streaming hasn't even arrived in india esports hasn't even properly arrived in india so i think uh, come in comparison to something like a movies business which is any 50 60 70 years old i think gaming is a very 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 nascent industry and the entire industry the entire value chain is there to be explored the third thing that i want to add here is the whole angle of micro transactions which i think sai Sa- Sa also touched upon a bit i think gaming is the only probably a content platform or i would say format content format where micro transactions are actually working where people are actually spending 2 rupees 3 rupees even to play a game right uh, it's not happening in videos as much it's not happening at social media or you know any other uh, you know any other uh, similar kind of a, a platform which is observing that kind of an engagement but i think uh, gaming is where where people are ready to put that buck down right even if it's small micro transactions Uh, given multiplying by the kind of minutes or hours that people are spending, it's coming out to be reasonably huge numbers already. So yeah, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a question from the audience here, just on this very interesting point that you spoke about, which is micro transactions, and I think the point that Tarun made about you know massive following, you know, in, in the long tail of, of the user base. Um, is this? Are we all concerned about uh, gaming becoming an addictive? um sort of uh, you know platform for people i mean are you guys doing anything proactively about this how do you think about gaming becoming addictive for your users or is there a is there a line you're starting to draw um and how do you think about it on a first principles basis anybody can so i'll take that right so uh, you know i mean uh, we have actually been looking at it Uh, right especially on our skill gaming platforms we are very conscious of people you know spending you know really indiscriminate amount of time on the platform and we sort of you know have ways to actually reach out to them and tell them that they may have a gaming problem uh, right this is especially true for the skill gaming platforms we've not seen uh, you know these problems sort of come out more in the casual space but uh you know definitely we are uh, you know as a as an industry you know i i know of all of the larger skill gaming platforms as well they are also looking at this as a as a problem and we are trying to you know put in regulations and such so that we can be more responsible uh you know as an industry well, what are, what are examples of that give us some give us some tangible examples of that so i mean it's great you're doing it what, what does that mean actually in practice on the platform so on, in practice on the platform we have ways for example every seven sessions on our on our real money rummy platform we will actually give you an ad for responsible play right and that ad would let you actually you know lock yourself out of the platform or set your limits of number of hours num- amount of time that you can spend it is also you know we are also proactive in actually measuring the time people spend on the platform and if we see you know on a on a seven day period people have spent more than 8 hours on an average in a day or you know more than 6 hours in in an on an average in a day we actually have machine learning algorithm which sort of you know get us the top top 3% of you know uh, you know time spent users and we actually effectively reach out to them and tell them that this is the amount of time that you are spending Uh, on the platform, and maybe you can go in and alter your behavior, and maybe modify the platform so that you know we can lock you out, right? So we, I mean, we are actually, you know, uh, we are definitely going in that direction and def- definitely addressing. Uh, you know, we're responsible. Absolutely. Anyone else? I think very similar. I can just you know give one. Uh, I I think anecdote uh, because I I do think this is a uh, you know important thing. Listen, I, at at the core. you know gaming like many other things in life actually stimulates different parts of your brain right there's different Absolutely. chemicals there's different things that happen and in any such thing there is a risk for somebody to get addicted to it and i think as as you know all the panelists over here i think there is some responsibility that you have as a platform especially where it involves money right, right. because it could that can not just damage you personally but you know potentially your entire family and so you know i i remember we were doing diligence on this uh, you know one uh, company and we saw some of these cohorts of users which were like just incredibly engaged like literally spending 6 hours 8 hours a day on the platform and i remember sitting with the founder and he said listen i can you know like let me just try and disable this guy for a minute and you see what's going to happen and we just randomly picked one guy out of that super engaged cohort and we just disabled his login in 3 minutes we got an email from that person saying hey my user id password has been disabled like what's going on right. okay and that is the level of you know almost 
uh, uh, you know, mania that some of these users on these platforms show. And I think similar to what Saurabh said, I think this company that, uh, you know, I, we spent some time understanding what they'd done, it was the exact same thing. They have ML algorithms that have been put in to actually understand if somebody's showing a pattern of basically going into that rabbit hole where they're spending tons amount of money, spending a lot of time, taking more risk with every game. And they actually start putting in cool off periods. And that right. cool off period keeps becoming longer and longer depending on sort of what pattern but they there's a, isn't i mean i get i get that it's the it's the right thing to do and seems like the thing but there will be an economic you know um tension here right because the ones who are sort of engaging the most are the ones who are spending the most and you correct you don't i mean these are I think, it's, uh, it's a necessary will. i think everybody has to as i think i can speak on behalf of every founder i think here everybody especially in rmg you have to take that cut you know willfully it's like a necessary evil you you can you need to put those you know uh, stop long stops you know i think like at Vinzo, of course you know time and i think since we are a real money platform as well skill gaming platform uh, there are of course limits posed in terms of the amount that you can withdraw the amount that you can add cash the amount that you can lose and you know we there are outright uh, principles where you know beyond a certain you know thresholds your your account would be disabled there'll be pop ups all those things and uh, that algorithm keeps on you know evolving and there are certain people who are like it's my money let me pay uh, or let me play, uh, but you need to you need to sort of you know uh, follow that as a guideline because uh, you never know right which thing mm-hmm. which thing is going to hit which player at it at which level. So the responsibility of course lies uh, with the platform owner. Okay, so let's switch gears a little bit, right? Um, I want to talk about unique IP, right? I think a lot of I think what we've seen as kind of the the the, the current onset of games is a lot of older games that are sort of have existed in the offline world we kind of just brought online and, and added this layer of of uh, that social experience uh, without actually being together in person but when do we expect and are you what are you guys doing any unique ips uh, that start in india and then ultimately become large global because you know we play pubg it's not an indian ip right we, a lot of the games that we are playing which are very very large uh, are sort of uh, not necessarily originated here so when does that happen? What is that opportunity? Right. Share some so, light on that. I would love to take that question. Right. So as a company, right, I told you, we, we've been into gaming since 2012. We sort of launched an original IP called Team Pati, which became like really, really large. And, you know, why it was something that was, that existed offline. And, uh, you know, we were sort of the first ones to digitize it. Uh, right. We, we were able to keep it as an IP and we have a very large loyal following for that IP. Uh, in the very you know recent past you know and actually not recent past like right, two two and a half years we've been actually trying to push out a triple A title from India. Uh, we have actually launched something called Soccer Battles. Uh, it launched about fifteen days ago as a soft launch in India. Uh, it is today being featured in India and Australia because we're sort of soft launching both on Apple and and Android. Uh, you know, it's a it's an amazingly high quality title that we've tried to make for the world. Uh, you know, in trying to you know, I mean, I mean, trying to get the first AAA title out of India, right? So, so that was the vision that we've been playing on. Uh, you know, I mean, still, you know, I think I think the game still, uh, you know, has to go through the time of test. But we are super excited, and and we have you know a couple more titles that we've been sort of investing on. Uh, see, these titles are not so. Again, if you compare it with movies, right? These titles actually take longer and are more expensive to develop. We've actually been working on this title for the last two years. We've spent more than a million dollars in sort of the development, and, yeah. and we we use international sort of uh, you know consultants to actually help us build the product and and sort of send it outside. So these are very expensive titles to build, and you know, you know, we are. But because we've been a gaming company for long, we actually can afford to take those risks, uh, right? Otherwise, you know, uh, trying to build these titles, you know, with the probability that they will succeed or not, uh, right? You know, it's 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 sort of a type, you know, it's a sort of a task. Uh, so but you needed, we, you needed the profitability to be able to reinvest that. But but give us a sense: is it a is it a five ten million dollar investment, or is it larger, or like how are you? What is this? Um, what, what does this mean for you in terms of um, and how how ex- I mean you said you had to go outside to get some you know talent to do this um, right. couldn't find it in India 
so so we used uh, you know consultants on the outside who could provide us feedback there are actually gaming consultants and we used consultants from three different geographies actually uh, you know we used a consultant from south america we used a consultant from europe and we used a consultant from north america right so from the us we actually got them involved through the process of building them sort of gotten got them to give us formal feedback on what they felt was missing in the title and such we uh, were super conscious of building an amazing looking title right so every transition every model that went in every character right we we created background stories for every character that are inside that game right so every character has a background story uh, you know we created with you know so you launch the game and you'll you'll get into a story where you'll sort of narrate uh, you know uh, the, the the environment and why this game is such Right, so so very similar to how Marvel games, for example, would would be in the U, you know, in the US, or a Marvel movie will will start. There's a background to the game. There is a there is a very good gameplay, uh, but it's it, it it was actually a very hard task, right? And we were expecting to do it in like six months. We actually took two and a half years, uh, right? But 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 what we wanted to do was we wanted to build a title that we are proud of, right? Side, and side, and Sai seems like he wants to say a lot. Sai, go ahead. Oh no, 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 no. I mean, I've, I've been. I mean, I, I, I had the opportunity to work uh, at at uh, Zynga back in the day uh, as a game designer and as a product manager. Uh, I completely second what uh, Saurabh is saying. I think, uh, I think the amount of effort and energy needed uh, uh, to build a AAA title is is incredible. Like AAA titles are a lot like shooting a movie, right? They take. Shooting a movie of the scale of Avatar, right? You know, if you're shooting a movie of the scale of Avatar, a good move, a good AAA title like uh, a Red Dead Redemption will take the same amount of effort. In fact, it takes the same amount of people. The amount of uh, the amount of effort that goes into it and the number of people that are involved is just is just uh, significantly uh, significantly high. So, I mean, I think I think now that Indian audiences have taken a, a liking to the games like PUBG, games like uh, you know similar games to that, I think you will see a lot more domestic play titles come. I think uh, with folks like you know sort of uh, leading the charge, I think we'll see a lot more good play titles. But I think the fact is, you have to experiment, and there will be a bunch of uh, there will be some amount of money that will, that has to be put up and. And the biggest reason why today is tough to build is because it, it, it demands a lot of upfront investment. You have to invest a lot of money upfront, and then make that money back as and when the game goes live, right? So, so that is usually tough because uh, you know having that kind of capital to put into the play title is not usually an easy decision to make. So that's why you know to Saurabh's point, right? You know, for someone who's been in gaming for that long. Uh, it makes a lot of sense for them to actually invest and, and, and build. For some of the younger players like us, probably it's not the easiest of decisions to make uh, very quickly. Even Manish can probably add a couple of points. I think he would have had, you know, he would have dealt with a lot of AAA titles. So I think, uh, see, we have a mid-core game which is WCC, and I'm happy to tell all the panelists that in the recent Atm Nirbhar uh, apps from India, WCC has been selected as the only gaming thing. And government is going to really announce it today, and they have been pushing and all that stuff. So I think it is a to the team which has been working on it for seven years. It it is it is that kind of tapasya, if I may call it. Right? Yeah. Uh, you have to keep chipping, 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 chipping mm-hmm. on a game engine, and then look at that someday you are able to kind of monetize it in terms of habit of in-app purchase and to that all that will really figure it out. But I think. We are in a beautiful time where there is past of seven years where you saw a domestic market which was not big, and hence the pot of gold was small and the reward was small. I think with the behavior of all the 300 plus million gamers, with roughly around 100 million people who have willingness to purchase in our purchases within the freemium games, I think now is a great time to create local content. Uh, based on the genres which are already so india looks to west from the genre point of view if you were to look at the evolution of the genres you can just really create a pie chart of how that moved in us from 2010 to 2016 and you could get a good sense of what is happening in india and what's going to happen in india so that you don't have to make mistakes on that you need to fit, you have a great examples of amazing game meta game design game economy to sort of point that is where I think one of the gap is there because we don't have a great supply pool. A lot of talent has come out of Zynga 
और ये विच हैज डीप एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ गेम डिजाइन गेम प्रोग्रेशन गेम मेटा इकोनॉमी आई थिंक दैट इज अ प्लेस वेर वी नीड टू रियली इम्प्रूव अ सप्लाई और कॉम्प्लीमेंटेड फ्रॉम आउटसाइड बट आई थिंक इन टर्म्स ऑफ द मार्केट एंड मार्केट रेडीनेस वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट मल्टीप्लेयर हैपनिंग वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट डिलीवर्ड मोबाइल स्पीड्स हैपनिंग वी स्पोक अबाउट माइक्रो ट्रांजेक्शन हैपनिंग सो दर इज अ लार्ज डोमेस्टिक मार्केट एंड वन थिंग विद इन आई ट्रूली बिलीव Uh, you may you may build in india for india or you may build in india for global like build in india for global will give you high much quicker pnl yeah. but if you build in india for india you may get far higher long term sustainability because in gaming unlike movies one thing is very different you play fewer games you play them for longer period of time you really don't keep flirting that's a casual audience which will keep flirting but as they move to mid core audience and hard core audience they play fewer games and they play longer term so if you are able to create that time pole today you are really building a very strong franchise and ip for next decade and that's the dividend which you can yield in india today if you were to really start focusing on it and it's not that expensive if you are not romantic about it if you are really creating a minimum lovable product and quickly testing it uh, most of the game developers in india they get romantic about their own painting and they start keep right. on doing it doing it without testing it with the consumers i think that's where the problem lies so no that's that's interesting thank you so much so let me um, switch a little bit and i think um, i mean in this way it, to some extent it's a bit like bollywood which is your you are taking some creative freedom to kind of bet on something which with, without a lot of testing as opposed to you know all of us <laughs> typically been used to a very programmatic measure everything I think Mithin, I think we may yeah I think we are losing you Mithin just to reboot yeah so so you know I think I, I think where Mithin was going right there are there are basically two types of games right so one is where you know you actually need to be romantic about them because you're what you're trying to create is actually a very very deep title with uh, you know actually a lot of romance uh, uh so and the other is the t- sort of titles that we have been doing in the past which is like you know, the the ones of teen patti the ones like rami tambola where the game and the game characteristics right were already you know known we actually knew what we wanted to build we only supplied the game with technology and a basic user interface and launched it right so so you know i think i think those games are uh, sort of in the one genre and the other is where you actually need to be very very romantic about building those games right so building a triple a title uh, is all about you know you know getting in love with your characters uh, really really focusing on you know pushing them forward sorry i was i was out thanks thanks for uh, uh, stepping in there guys so um, i i want to move a little bit and then again take more of a roi uh, defensibility that kind of question so uh how do you guys think about you know defensibility on platforms right i mean is this also one of those games where a lot of you know user acquisition money will get spent and there'll be a lot of you know uh burn 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 or or is this category different are there inherent network effects or or other factors that give you defensibility both and i think uh you know from an entrepreneur perspective also from an investor perspective i think these things are important because you know how how would this turn out ultimately from a return of investment is, is also important to understand sure so i think uh, uh, i think everyone uh, everyone who's been in the gaming business for a reasonable amount of time realizes that <clears throat> one of the core assets for any gaming business is the core mathematic capabilities that the company can possess right some of the things that uh, saurabh was mentioning a few minutes back like around 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 the data that uh, data capabilities that that they have uh i think create a lot of uh, uh, they create a lot of advantage for the company that understands them and please that i'll give you a simple example, right one of the biggest reasons why zynga was so good back in the day now in fact zynga is now bounced back share price is about 10 dollars again so uh, uh is because they were ahead of uh in terms of the abilities that 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 they had better than anybody else in the ecosystem so one one of the biggest uh, uh, you know is that any any gaming company can create or in fact any digital business can create their their understand the ability to use that so that that 
uh, that one piece is something which is not easy to replicate. It's not how much money, uh, how much money you have. And first, uh, uh, first, it's not a just just a blind user acquisition game. But at the end of the day, it's about acquiring the users who are going to uh, who are going to repay the uh, repay the money that you spent acquiring. So again, to acquire, who to acquire, what are the patterns we're looking to acquire? It all comes. Those answers are again answered from data. So, I think, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I think one of the biggest, uh, the big, uh, tenfold, should I say, the biggest uh, uh, piece in this entire business is, on, is, is the kind of data that is uh, ahead, of, uh, ahead of the market. In fact, probably, it, and we should all obviously uh, aim to be ahead of most people in the world. Um, Tarun, are there any winner-take-all type situations here? Like, do you see any of that happening? I don't think so. You know, one of the things that I really like about the gaming market and um, I've had a bunch of discussions with actually several people over here, but in outside, you know, there are few in India on the surface, a lot of markets look very large, but profitability remains elusive, right? And I think gaming has traditionally shown that if built well, profitability is not something that can elude you for long, like in most of the categories that people have built games so far, right? Uh, and I keep telling this to gaming founders when I meet, saying that, listen, every investor will take one risk, right? Especially at early stage, where, and regulatory risk is always a one risk that everyone who's investing in gaming comes with some view of, okay, you know what, there is some sort of area, uh, gray area within gaming, and I have, to make, I have to make peace with that, and I'll take, you know, some risk over there. I think investors won't be willing to take both a profitability risk and a gaming risk. And I think my sense is what I've seen a bunch of companies and Dream11 has shown it and Nazara has shown it and MPL has shown it and, you know, Octro has shown it and, you know, maybe Winzo is now there or, you know, a bunch of companies are already actually showing very strong profit pools uh, that one can get from gaming. And it, it in many ways reminds you of EdTech, which is, again, the other sector in this country where, you know, one sees large market, but also a very large profit pool. Um, and, and I think, you know, as long as, you know, one that, that continues, I actually don't see a reason why it's going to be winner take all. See, winner take all generally happens when there are very strong network effects, not only in the business, but also from a cap table perspective, where everybody's concentrating capital in one company because, you know, you just like the company just needs constant funding to get over the line. But today, I mean, I spoke to a company, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I had never heard of the company. They're generating reasonable amounts of profits and not raised a single dollar of external capital. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's very true. Um, so, guys, I think uh, if anyone else wants to answer that question from an entrepreneur perspective, that'd be great. And then we have just two more minutes and, and we can uh, have some parting thoughts. No, I think I agree with uh, Arun's uh, assessment. He's right. Absolutely right. Uh, yeah. In India, definitely gaming is one of those businesses like tech which, will, uh, which can make a lot of difference. Okay. So, then on that point, which one of you, last, we, have a, we have a last couple of minutes, so I'm going to ask you the tough question. Which one of you is going public first and or give me your give me a prediction of when you're going public so i think he's i think he's not on video the person who will go first will <laughs> go video. actually he's already <laughs> gone public <laughs> yeah I'm but okay money I mean, sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. money you going public <laughs> so uh Mithen, right that's a tough question uh you know i i think uh you know there, there have not been too many gaming companies from India who have gone public. You know, we, we only have sort of one half example of, you know, Delta Corp, who is also owning an online uh, gaming business and is public, uh, right? Uh, but, but what I see today is that there are several companies with the profitability and revenue scale that they can go public, right? And we are probably also there where we can also, you know, actually go public. Uh, you know, it's it's actually you know, then a decision between you know, you know, us being, you know, I mean, whether whether I really want to be a public company, you know, founder, uh, right? So yeah, so so I, I think uh, public company. Yeah, Someone's gonna do it. Hey, and um, uh, other yeah. Guy, Avan, um, yeah, we're just two years exactly what I mentioned, right? We're just two years old and. Uh, I think uh, I think it's a really long journey ahead of us. Uh, right now, what our main endeavor is to build build a build a product uh, that our customers love. And to be very honest, I think three four years down the line, how Windows is going to emerge. Even I'm only fifty percent aware and only fifty percent sure of it. Right, rest fifty percent is going to be about grabbing opportunities, trying out, figuring out what our customers like love because their preferences are also going to change. Right, 
of course the going public not going public i think it's more of a matter of whether you are able to generate enough value for uh, your uh, different stakeholders right especially financial investors uh, you know and different partners that you come along with the journey i think uh, given given uh, it's fairly established in the panel that uh, gaming is a fairly profitable sector uh, personally winzo is already i would say you know we are cm to positive i think uh, uh, there is no doubt about, doubt about it that uh, a lot of money has to be made a lot of money will be made in this journey yes i think that's 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 what's more important going public not going public is something to figure out for later yeah. okay good so well i want to thank all of you uh, i think at least one thing we have established is that uh, it is going to be bigger than bollywood uh, so thank you for that and uh, i think um, you know uh, really appreciate all of you guys taking time i know you have a uh, super busy schedules and and again um, you know i really appreciate uh, your participation so thank you so much Good luck. Thank, Thank you guys. Fantastic discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.